So totally, yeah. You mentioned that um, you were an undergrad and I've kind of alluded to the, we've also talked about, you know, you being uh, involved in leading CPA marketing centers. So how did we go from one to the other? I'm going to be the uncreative podcast host and kind of ask you, what was your path to becoming a designated accountant? Um, well, actually, um, it was a little bit unconventional. Um, I actually... When, when I when I mentioned undergrad, um, I didn't actually study accounting in, in undergrad. I studied social science. Uh, I majored in sociology and criminology and kind of had my, my thoughts on maybe going to law school. Never even thought about accounting. I had taken one business class, which was like an intro business class in undergrad, and that was it. And when I got close to the end of undergrad, I thought like this, this feels a bit weird. How have I not really taken more business? Uh, and I had, you know, some electives to spare. And it was really near the end of my undergrad that I took uh, a true accounting. It was intro management accounting and <sighs> financial accounting combined. And like when you talk about aha moments, I, I literally was just falling in love with the material. And you have to remember, I wasn't 18 at that point. I was closer to the end of undergrad. So I, I had a couple years. I had taken classes in all different spheres. And there was something about it I, I liked. So finished undergrad and then went back to school to take all the accounting courses that I needed to be eligible for the CPA exams. So that was my pathway. Um, I, I was under the old uh, pre-CPA converged uh, system. So I got my CA um, designation originally and I worked in assurance. Um, I worked in public accounting Then I moved into kind of more a bit of a consulting role um, outside of assurance and started, started teaching part-time, which kind of came to me. It wasn't really something I specifically looked for. Um, Ooh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you about that because we have a number of people um, who, not like a huge, not like everybody, um, but some people are like, hey, I think I might wanna teach someday or hey, very rarely somebody's like, I want your job. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad it looks like a fun job because it is. Um, so how did, how did kind of the stars align where that opportunity kind of what it sounds like fell in your lap almost. Sorry, Sam, did you say rarely that people say I want your job or frequently? <laughs> to my face, my students, while they're in the middle of it, yeah. <laughs> they will occasionally say, um, outside of my students, perhaps I hear it a little bit more often. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I, I have a lot of students who say I could see myself in your shoes one day. Um, okay. It's one of the most common emails I get from students or prior students, and they want to chat about that. Um, how did it fall? Kind of. Well, I exaggerated a little bit. Um, <laughs> I did. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I, as a high school student, um, even in, in undergrad, I always liked helping my peers and, and I did peer tutoring and uh, helping other students with kind of getting on their feet with studying and exams and that type of thing. Um, and when I was doing my accounting courses post undergrad, there was a course that I noticed that didn't have a tutorial leader. That in fact, the course didn't have tutorials, whereas other courses did. Um, so I don't know if everyone knows what I mean by tutorials, but kind of those optional outside of, of lecture sessions you can go to that are free, that are accompanying certain classes. Yeah, kind of like where they, quote, just apply. Like you're like, let's go through lots of examples and figure out why we're doing this. Like in how. And you and usually it's led by another student or a recent grad. So you can, the students can relate to them more. Yeah. It's not like, you know, the, the prof. Um, so I went to one of my profs and I said, you know, I loved your course and, and she knew me and I did well. And I would like to volunteer. You don't have to pay me to be a tutorial leader for your course. And I must have done that for 
like really a good number of semesters. And then she came to me and she said, you know, you're doing a great job. We want to pay you for this. And so eventually I started getting paid for it. Nice. And then one day um, I got an email from the school and they said, we have an opening to teach a course and we know you've been around. Are you interested? And I said, like, hell yeah. I'm interested. yeah. So that that's how it happened um, for me. Amazing. This is, I love like stories and real life examples of making your own opportunities and not like perfect, you know, networking, not just with humans, but with institutions and, you know, just putting yourself out there without the expectation of, um, you know, anything in return, it goes around, comes around and like amazing to seek out. Yeah. Your own opportunities and make it work. So kudos. I, I will probably have to have another offline conversation with you about how to get people to your students to want your job. Because <laughs> I literally had one last week and she's amazing. I'm really looking forward to meeting with her more. Uh, she wants to know kind of more about my career path and how, um, you know, the different steps that she can take during her fourth year. But she specifically said, I'm really interested in the things that you've done, um, but I don't necessarily want to be a prof. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's fun. <laughs> like, but okay. So yeah, we'll have to meet and talk offline about that. So fast fast forward or maybe not fast forward. So were you doing, um, when you were teaching, um, is that at your current place of employment or was that a different university? Um, well, I started teaching at, at York university, uh, and York university's accounting program, uh, has classes in the day, but it also has classes in the night, very much geared for students who are working and going through the, the accounting courses part-time. So I was working full-time in my job in an accounting firm and teaching at night and it kind of grew and grew to teaching a bit more. Um, and I do still teach at York university, uh, but I also teach at Ryerson. Yes. So your current position, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, assistant professor um, of accounting at Ryerson University. That is correct. Nice.